What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by the channel. Today's project is this little wonder walk behind blower and the problem is that it's broken and we need to replace the engine. Let's take a good look at it, find out what's wrong with it and hopefully we can fix it. In this video, we try and repair this blower, but of course, there's more than one way to go about this project. Your comments or suggestions are always appreciated. In a past video, we replaced the worn out Briggs and Stratton engine with one from Northern Tool. The main reason it was picked was that it had an electric start, which would make starting it much easier. The first of our problems, though, was that it had less power than the Briggs motor, but a bigger problem was that the shaft was smaller and it had to have a sleeve on the output shaft and a step key. And if you look closely, you can see it didn't go very well for the engine. The output shaft finally broke and we now have to replace it. The engine we're gonna use, of course, is a 301cc Harbor Freight engine. The reason we're gonna use this engine is because it's rated at eight horsepower and it's got a one inch shaft, which means we don't have to sleeve it this time. And the first thing we gotta do is remove the air inlet and remove the blower fan assembly. Then after that, we can remove the four bolts that braces the engine to the housing. Before we can remove the bolts that mount the engine to the rest of the frame, we'll remove the battery and the makeshift support. This of course was the battery that powered the electric starter. And now that all the bolts are finally removed, we can take the broken engine off and test fit the new one. So it looks like the engine's output shaft is about an inch higher than the center of the hole in the blower housing. This means we're going to have to make some modifications to the engine mounting brackets to lower it so the blower fan is centered properly. Unfortunately, the mount itself, which is the red part, is not adjustable. But if we disconnect the red part from the white blower housing and lower it, it should allow us to recenter the engine and the blower fan in the housing. Now, I really wanted to use the 420cc engine instead of this one, but it's rated at 13 horsepower, which is more than what I need. That, and it was almost about twice the price, so this one's going to do just fine. We know that the broken engine was at the correct shaft height, so if we measure both of them and see what the difference is, we can then make new mounting holes for the engine support. And it looks like the difference is about an inch and a quarter. So we need to make new mounting holes about one and a quarter inches below the bottom bolt. After measuring it, just drill the new holes and use bolts that are the same size and pitch as the others. I wasn't sure how long they needed to be, so I went with the long ones just in case. There was one strange problem that we're going to have to deal with, which is the muffler. It stood off the back of the engine by about two inches and would hit the back of the blower housing. So it's going to have to be removed and in its place we'll have to install a pipe so there's some sort of back pressure on the engine. After loosely installing the bolts to the engine and the red mounting plate, we can now stab the blower housing to the engine. Then we'll carefully install the new nuts and bolts to the lower part of the frame. Once the blower housing is mostly in place, we can now install the four bolts that brace the engine to the back of the housing. Remember to start all the nuts and bolts by hand and leave them loose. And once all the bolts are on, tighten everything up. If you want to use a torque wrench, you're welcome to, however, I'm not going to.
Now that all the bolts are tight, we can now install the blower fan. I tried to put the key on the shaft first, but eventually I put the key on the blower fan itself and then installed it onto the shaft. The blower fan was on the shaft about halfway and it needed a bit of persuasion for the rest of it. It took about two firm taps before it bottomed out and the extra taps just confirmed that it didn't sound like a church bell anymore. After that I installed the washers, the bolt, and tightened it. Once the bolt is tight, install the air inlet and its nuts. There is another safety guard that I'll install later over the inlet once I confirm that it's working like it's supposed to. And with it off, I can confirm that the bolt hasn't come loose as well. It's now time for the most important part of any new engine startup, which is of course putting the oil in. Follow the instructions and double check it. I'd hate to lose this engine after all this work. Here's where things get a little personal. After taking the fuel cap off the tank, I'm going to disconnect the safety chain that keeps you from losing your cap. In the last engine that wasn't a Harbor Freight engine, I found that the chain wasn't stainless steel and after a few years the chain became rusted which then contaminated the fuel tank. So I'm going to get rid of this one now. I'd rather replace a fuel cap than have to remove the tank, flush out the rust, and then clear the blockage at the pickup. It's now time to put some fresh treated 100% gas into the tank and try starting it. I have to admit I don't usually buy anything new so this is quite a change for me. As expected, it started and ran without any problems, and the blower itself works very well so I can't wait to try it out. I'll break in the engine and change the oil later on. 
So my question is, do you follow a break-in procedure on your new four-cycle or even two-cycle equipment, or do you just start it and go and follow the regular maintenance cycle? I know what I would do, but I'm more curious about your answer. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time. Please feel free to ask any questions, and I hope to see you in my next video.